to the moment. And I just want you all to rise at every center, at every location as we receive all the way from Koinonia Global. <laughs> the Apostle Joshua Selma. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Help us tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, we trust your wisdom. We trust your spirit. We pray that you add to all that we have learned tonight. Empower us by your spirit. And you take the glory. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. It's a joy to be here again. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. Pastor Godman, thank you again, you and your dear wife and the entire ministerial team. Thank you for this opportunity. It's always an honor to serve the Lord and to serve his people. And um, thank you for extending the invite to be here again. It's my pleasure to be here. I honor every man, every woman of God here represented. May God bless you. I want us to honor Pastor Bolaji. I was so blessed at this session. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Incredible, incredible teaching. I took a lot of notes myself, and it was a most edifying moment. And I'm trusting that um, the session we'll have now will add to that which we have learned. And the goal especially for conferences like this is to reposition us by the spirit towards greater effectiveness and to help us excel even in experience and i'm already honored you know to be part of what god is doing in your life at this time and i can imagine the sessions past the things that you have learned already we thank god for the visionary leadership of your pastor and we pray that God will continually lift this church from glory to glory. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm speaking very briefly just to add to the session on the dominion power of light. The dominion power of light. John chapter 1 and verse 5. The dominion power of light. I thought to just share three things very quickly that um, I communicated with my people back home. Number one is that Satan is a major hindrance, but not the only hindrance to your living a victorious Christian life. That even if Satan were not a factor, many people would still be failures. Because Satan is a major factor, but not the only factor. Number two, I taught them, and I just want to bring it up here, that most prayer requests were designed to be answered through growth. And this is something Pastor Bology so profoundly communicated, especially about capacity. Most of the things we call prayer requests are simply testaments of our deficiencies of growth. Because as you grow in the spirit and as you grow in understanding, you will find out that many concerns will fade with growth. Growth was designed to transition you almost automatically. Once you contend for growth, you will find out that there are certain things you will not need to pray for again. Are we together? Because that capacity you now have does not allow certain situations to exist. So when we grow in understanding and in power, many issues of concern will no longer exist. And then I said, to manifest or reflect the fullness of Christ. The Bible talks about coming into the fullness of Christ. And for many years, I wondered what that was. I listened to several teachings that describe the fullness of Christ until the Holy Spirit opened me up. There are three dimensions 
to the study of the Christ that a man must access to really enjoy the fullness of Christ. Number one is the study of his nature. You must understand the character of the Christ. Number two, his wisdom, the ways of God. And number three, his works, the power of God. It is three, these three dimensions that represent the expressions of the fullness of Christ. Again, you really want to understand Christ fully. You must study his nature, his character. You must access his wisdom, the mind of Christ. And you must understand his works, the power of God that is dispensed to make things happen. I pray that God will bless someone tonight in the name of Jesus. So John chapter 1 and verse 5. The Bible says, And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Very profound statement. The first thing we see here is that the light, if it is light indeed, that it shines. And that it can shine in a way and a manner that erodes darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 8, 18. Ephesians 4, 18. The Bible says, Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. Now, the truth about God is that God loves everybody equally, but our possibilities are not the same. Our possibilities in life and destiny as far as manifesting the glory of God is concerned is predicated upon many factors. Are we together? And the love of God is not necessarily one of them because Romans 10, 12 tells us that the same Lord is rich unto all. Hallelujah. And so God does not love one believer more than he loves another. His love was shared abroad equally to all of us by the Holy Spirit. Why then is there such a disparity in our Christian experience? Why then is there such a disparity? You find one believer excel, living a victorious life, and you find another believer in such painful defeat. Hallelujah. I believe with all my heart that it is because most believers are in ignorance. So here's how it works. The gospel of salvation sustains the power to transit an unbeliever. When you hear the gospel and you believe, the Bible tells us that you are grafted into Christ. There is a transition, there is a translation that happens to you in the spirit, right? You become a believer. But the kingdom that you now are part of is knowledge dependent, releasing the potential of that Zoe life that you have received at the point of salvation. Are we together? It depends on your understanding the components of the kingdom. The Bible calls them the mysteries of the kingdom. So there are many believers who are saved, genuinely so. Many believers are in the kingdom, but they are not able to explore the reality of the riches of the spirit life because they do not understand that excelling in the kingdom, there is only one key to the kingdom. It's not a metallic object, it's a person. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But when you come into the kingdom, there are the keys of the kingdom. The mysteries by which you route your ways, you route your path. Are we following now? So many believers live such ineffective spiritual lives. They live sorry in sorry states even though they are saved. They do not utilize the advantage of the spiritual resources that have been made available. The word of God, the ministry of prayer like you've learned the investment of the Holy Spirit, and the reason is largely ignorance. So walk with me for a few minutes as we look at this very interesting subject. Our possibilities in this kingdom is based on the degree and the dimension of light that we access. First Timothy chapter 2, when we read from verse 4, Paul was mentoring his son in the gospel, Timothy, and he reveals to us God's desire for all men. He puts it so beautifully that number one, God desires that all men be saved. This is God's first desire in order of priority. He desires that all men be saved 
Are we together? Verse 4. You stop at verse 4. First Timothy 4 and, I mean 2 and verse 4. Not 5, 4 please media. First Timothy 2 and verse 4. That he desires that all men be saved and then that they come unto the knowledge of the truth. He desires that all men be saved. And then when they are saved, they don't stop there. They begin that journey of coming unto the knowledge of the truth. Are we together now? This is very, very important. In Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1, the Bible says, Arise, then it says, Shine, for your light is come. I would always like to read scripture from the Amplified Version. It puts it beautifully. It says, Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, Rise to a new light. Arise and shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The next verse says, For darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. Verse 3 now says, Gentiles shall come to your light, it says, and their kings to the brightness of your rising. Do you believe that? So the glory of God is only made manifest in the life of the believer. Please listen. In the presence of light. The Bible defines light as whatever sustains the power to make manifest. It says that which makes manifest is light. That means when light comes, nothing hides again. The glory is revealed in the presence of light. Are we together? You can buy a new gadget as beautiful as that gadget is. In the presence of darkness, you are not able to see it. But when you bring light there or put on the phone, then you can see the beauty, the colors, you can explore the features that are there. So many believers are not able to step into the fullness of this victorious life because of ignorance. Knowledge is powerful. Knowledge is powerful. Light is powerful. Now in the kingdom, when we talk about light, we're talking about three things. Number one, we're talking about knowledge. Please write. Light in the kingdom connotes knowledge. Number two, light in the kingdom connotes revelation. I'll tell you the difference. There is a difference between knowledge and revelation. Light in the kingdom connotes knowledge. It connotes revelation. Then it connotes illumination. These three are similar, but they are not the same. Every time the Bible talks about light in reference to the believer's walk, he's talking about access to knowledge, access to revelation, access to illumination. These are the keys that help the believer to release and manifest the glory of God in experience. Again, that light talks about access to knowledge, access to revelation, access to illumination. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 15, when you read from verse 8 to 10, just write for reference, the Bible talks to us about a very interesting parable that Jesus himself gave. It's called the parable of the lost coin. So here was the story that somebody lost his coin. It was somewhere in the room, but you could not find exactly where it was. But he knew that that coin had fell somewhere. The first thing the person did in remedying that situation was to get light. The Bible says he lit that place and took a broom and began to sweep through the room and eventually found it. So that every time a man's life, a man's destiny, a man's dignity is lost, God's recommended solution is that you have access to light. And with that light, you begin to sweep and you begin to find. Are we together now? The parable of the lost coin was a revelation of how the kingdom operates. That there is treasure, but it is somewhere. I don't know where it is. But the first solution to that situation is to access light. 
Many believers are unable to walk in dominion in this kingdom. Unfortunately, we talk about dominion. We shout about dominion. Respectfully, we sing about dominion. But very few believers have been able to step into the experience of dominion. Hallelujah. He said, let them have dominion. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. God gave us that mandate. That means in God's mind, you and I were supposed to be expressions of his glory in such a way that dumbfounds principalities and powers. I always like to quote Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. It says we are his workmanship. Are we believers? We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had preordained or before ordained that we should walk in them. There is an ordination upon every believer that your life eventually becomes a manifestation of the glory of God. This is God's goal for you. Not just heaven. That right here on earth, your life becomes such a display of the glory of God. Are we together? The Bible calls us living epistles. Books that are alive. That men can learn God by studying you. Your life becomes a complete endium of testimonies a revelation of the wonder walking power of God may that be someone's testimony in the name of Jesus Christ that your life becomes too glorious to be ignored it becomes impossible to act as if you are not there the Bible says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel that lamp is kept upon a candlestick and it gives lights to everyone in the room. Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light in that similitude so shine. Someone say so shine. Say it again. Say so shine. Let your light, these lights that you have, these lights that you are, let it so shine before men. Not just before spirits, before men that they may see your good works. And glorify your father in heaven John 15 16 ye have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain if you truly love the Lord and you desire to glorify him then your life must bear fruit always when you make advancement, when you make progress, when you scale heights, I like the way scripture puts it. It says, by you I can run through a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. I'm praying for someone here. Welcome to your season of strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Again, I welcome you to a new season where you wave yesterday goodbye. A season of exploits, a season of grace. Testimony meeting testimony in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. The glory of this church as we see and rejoice and celebrate is not just based on the will of God. For there are many like your pastor that have it as part of their ordination to be glorious in ministry. The difference is the presence or the absence of light. It is amazing the effect that the presence or the bankruptcy of light can produce in the life of a believer. It says having their understanding darkened. That's the problem. It does not even factor the presence of Satan in dealing with their state, in diagnosing their state. It says having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that means this is not how a believer should be. This level of defeat should not be found in the life of a believer. But that becomes and remains your lot in the presence of darkness. Dominion in any area in this kingdom is based on sufficient knowledge of the ways of God. Dominion, to command dominion. To walk in dominion in any area, your finances, your relationships, in ministry, in business, in career, dominion in any area of your life, are we together? Depends on the kind and the magnitude of light that you command. The truth is that we know some things, but many of us do not know enough to command the kind of dominion that we desire. 
We are not necessarily in total ignorance, but there is a requisite level of spiritual knowledge. Listen, you are not given the liberty to freelance your knowledge onto victory. There has to be a high level spiritual illumination that is able to drive the darkness in your life. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2, a scripture that has inspired me so much. It says, and if anyone thinks that he knoweth anything, he says he knoweth not what he needs to know as he ought to know. There is a standard. There is a reference. Are we together? We ride prosperously according to Psalm 45 and verse 4. It says, rise prosperously because of truth. Your triumph in life and destiny is because of truth. I like the way pastor put it while he was teaching. He, the Bible calls truth a belt. It brings stability. It saves you from shame and embarrassment. Imagine that you wear a trouser that is not your size. And there is no belt. And you are jumping and playing. What do you think is going to happen? Do I need to describe it for you what will happen? There is a relationship between shame and darkness. There is a relationship between tragedy, misery, circles of mishaps and darkness. So he calls truth a belt. That you can weigh it and it, with it, there will be confidence. You will jump, you will rejoice and scale heights in destiny. Hmm. Are we together? Many people desire to walk in health. Many people desire to live long. Many people desire to excel in their finances. I think finances is one of the areas that has stung people, I think, in the last two years. I hope I'm right on that, Pastor. I mean, the average believer has gone through hell and high water in this area of finances to a point that many people today do not believe. That's the reason why pastor's message blessed me so much. That sometimes you can come around limitations and out of your pain, your pain can build a theology about God to justify that state. Are we together? Pain does something to people when it's prolonged. It can redefine God in a way that is not correct. Every dimension in the kingdom, watch this. The kingdom of God is a compendium of limitless possibilities. Find a way of believing this. Limitless possibilities. Only left to the faith and the expectation of the believer. There is nothing God cannot do. There is no height a believer cannot attain unto. Are we together? Remember that as a species, we are the zenith of God's creation. The apex of his creativity. He took time and invested that time and creativity in the making of man. We are not weak. No. No. It is that we have not understood the system that he built around our optimal function. You can have a product. Whilst Pastor Bolaji was teaching, I saw a lot of displays of, I, of um, iPhones. Let me tell you what is common with all the iPhones. They will produce the same result in the presence of ignorance. That was my observation in the story. All the iPhones from 7 to 15 will produce the same effect depending on who holds it. What gives value to the iPhone in addition to the version is the orientation of the holder. If the person holding it does not even know it's a phone, he can throw it in water. This is what ignorance does. Ignorance can turn anything valuable to become an object of shame and it will be a reflection of the holder so many situations are report cards they are revealing something that is deficient in us while we are pointing at them to change the situations are saying i came as a testament that there is need for transformation in your life the dominion power of light are we learning there is a way to do ministry that you will fail from the start the destiny of that journey is failure. No demon has to attack you. The level of spiritual laws you will violate will ensure that you will fail. There is a way to do business that you will fail. It doesn't matter who sponsors you. Giving you more money will only be adding pain for you. Are we together now? 
There is a way you live, you, uh, you, you treat your spouse, there is a way you raise children that it is almost sure that you are going to raise troublemakers. Listen, light is what separates victory from defeat. Many believers desire great things and the Bible tells us that we have been given these exceeding great and precious promises. It says that by them we might be the partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. There are great things that God has spoken about you and I, but walking in the experience of that, it does not just depend on the will of God. No matter the kind of prophecy that comes upon your head, in the present of darkness the result will be the same are we together so God brought us here for this feast of light to begin to tear those veils to reveal to you why certain situations don't change in spite of prayer why it does not change in spite of prophetic words why it does not change you desire the change but desire is important but not enough the Bible says through desire a man he responds to that desire by separating himself. Then he intermeddles with every dimension of wisdom. That's the ultimate solution of that man. When you camp around desire, meaning I am tired of this financial situation, I'm tired of this spiritual situation, lamenting over it does not produce solutions. It is human to weep and there is a place to cry, but crying does not produce results. When Jesus wept over Lazarus, he did not come out because Jesus cried. Jesus cried but had to wipe his tears and engage a principle. What brought Lazarus out was prophetic declaration. Not even the tears of Jesus brought any miracle. So weeping and crying over situations is very human and there is a place for that. But when you are done crying, you need to know that if darkness will leave, it is because light has come. For someone I prophesy over you, in the name of Jesus, the era of walking in darkness, confusion, allowing things to just happen in your life, being a victim of happenstance, it comes to an end in Jesus' name. I declare that after this conference, light will bring predictability to your life, predictability to your results, predictability to your Christian experience. Hallelujah. That you will begin to build your destiny with intention. You will not just accept things that happen. No. You will participate actively and build your destiny. And when you see it, you say, this is how God showed me. And this is what I intended it to be. Whatsoever thing he called it, that was the name thereof. There was a way he called it for it to be thereof. Because there are others who have called many things that did not become. Are we learning now? that light has dominion power and you must understand it knowledge knowledge listen i i'm praying that whilst i'm teaching that god will create an appetite in you to fight ignorance like you are fighting the devil the same passion you use to fight satan fight ignorance declare war on ignorance and half-hearted knowledge half-hearted incomplete knowledge i know a little of prayer i know a little on finances i know a little on leadership i know a little on administration i know a little on bible study i know a few principles here and there and most of us have gaps in our spiritual understanding and we are not able to rise to the level of mastery that our destinies require here's what the bible says that if a man strives for mastery that man is not crowned except and unless he strives lawfully are we learning hmm. mastery So every dimension of grace in the kingdom is accessed through light. Whatever you have seen in your dream, whatever you have seen from scripture comes through light. And light meaning knowledge, strategic knowledge, light meaning illumination, light meaning revelation. Very quickly, let me show you how to access light. There are five ways as revealed in scripture that the believer accesses the revelation that is required for your dominion and for your excelling. I'll run through it very quickly. Are you ready? Number one, the first way we access light 
is through consistent study of scripture consistent study of scripture please if you're writing underline the word consistent it makes all the difference the first way the believer accesses the illumination the revelation the light that sets you apart elevates you and causes you to advance is through consistent study of scripture in luke chapter 4 and verse 17 a powerful principle there the bible says jesus came to the temple as his custom was and the Bible says the scroll of Isaiah was given to him. Then verse 17 makes a profound statement. Just verse 17 and we'll stop there. Luke 4, 17. It says, um, he found where it was written concerning him. I like that statement. He found where it was written. There are many things written, but it's your responsibility to find it. He found it. You don't find without searching. Are we together? Many of us have not taken our time to find what God has written concerning you. Concerning your health, concerning your longevity, concerning your excelling in ministry. Are we together now? Do you know the things that God has written concerning you? Have you checked your Bible to read that he said when men say there is a casting down for you that there will be a lifting up? This is what is written concerning you. That though your beginning be small, your latter end will increase. Is that still in your Bible? He says, my heart is indicting a good matter. Yea, I speak of excellent things. That my tongue is a pen of a ready writer. That means never should you communicate and people say, what are you saying? No, there is life coming from you. Your tongue is a pen. You are rewriting things in people's destinies. It says, Gentiles shall come to my light and kings to the brightness of my rising. Are we together? Genesis 12 verse 3. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. I am a blessing, not as a preacher, as a believer. I am a blessing. Preaching is only a vehicle that gives that prophecy expression in my life. If I drop ministry today, I will still be a blessing. Because it says, in thee. These are the things written concerning you. But have you taken out time to find out? It says, with long life shall I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Oh, let the spirit of death hear that scripture again. With long life shall I satisfy Joshua Seman and show him my salvation. You need to know such a scripture in this wicked world we live in. The psalmist said, I lay me down and I slept. He says, I wait for the Lord. It is the Lord that sustains men. I want to show you how to access lights that gives you command. It says, thou shalt be blessed in the city. Thou shalt be blessed in Lagos. Stop thinking Lagos alone. Think the globe. Everywhere has a portion of yours. Your, listen, the Bible says the increase of the earth is for how many? For all. There is a portion for all men in the earth. It says even the king is fed by that which comes from the field. There is a portion for you in the U.S. There is a portion for you in Europe. You don't have to be there to access your portion. Light can draw it to you where you are. Do you believe what you are hearing? Consistent study of the scripture. That kings will come to entreat your favor. This is what is written. That God can restore years. No man can restore time. Time does not go backward. Time only goes forward. But the one who created time has a way of, of working things out. That he can take events that should have happened and bring it to your future. God for you. But have you found it? Do you know what he has written? How about Psalm 112? Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. The Bible says his seed shall be mighty upon earth, that the generation of the upright shall be blessed, that wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Genesis 17 and verse 6, I will make you exceeding fruitful. Are we together? It says I will make kings from out of you. You are called to a life of influence. Don't just attract great people. Make great people out of you. Kings coming out of you. Kings coming out of you. Kings coming out of you. 
Oh, apostle, you don't know my situation. I come from a family where we were all cursed. You are not the first person to be cursed. When Reuben saw his father's, he, he slept with his father's concubine, a curse came upon him. He said, you are the firstborn, you are the strength of my might, but unstable as the wind, you will not succeed. But a time came, the man was depleting, and Moses spoke a prophetic word. He said, let Reuben live, and let his people not be few. You are not the first to go to a family with causes and foundational things. Have you found the voice that can speak and say, let Joseph leave. Let Mary leave. Let this person or that person leave. There is always a way out. And that way has been written. But until you search, you cannot find. Laziness of many believers, as far as the consistent study of scripture is concerned, is their unbecoming. Obtain grace in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. To commit yourself to study. Much study in the name of Jesus. Are we learning? So the first way that believers access light is through consistent study of scripture. Number two, very quickly. The second way we access light in the kingdom. If you are learning, say amen. amen. The second way we access light in the kingdom is through the power of corporate fellowship, the house of God. Micah chapter 2 and verse 4. Something happens to believers when you are gathered in the house of God like this. You know the Bible says how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. He likens it to the oil that starts from the head of Aaron the priest down to his bed, down to his skirt. He says for there God had commanded a blessing even life forevermore. Micah chapter 4 and verse 2 talking about the house of the Lord. Let me read it here. 2 and verse 4. It says in that day Micah did I get that right? 4 verse 2 not 2 verse 4 please. Corrected media. Micah 4 verse 2. Do I have it there? It says and many nations let's read together. One to read. And many nations shall say come and let us go up to the mount of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob. What happens there? And he will teach us. The teaching ministry happens in the house of God. And man can access light. Light that brings dominion. Imagine if you were not here today. All the sessions that have come. One, listen, let me tell you the truth. As big as a door is, the key that opens it can be in your pocket. But if that key is missing, you can stand from morning till night. Doors don't answer to sentiments. Are we together now? The first way doors open according to scripture is the use of correct keys. Not the use of keys. The use of correct keys. The house of God is a mysterious place ordained by God where the saints can access light. Distilled strategic light. Where the teaching priest has gone through the labor of piecing together the revelation enough for your consumption that you can trust what you are receiving. You have been saved the labor of editing, searching the scripture. It is the reason why you should honor every man of God that labors in word and doctrine loving you beginning from your pastor. Because most people do not understand the labor of the average serious man of God in putting together a sermon. It is a feast of light already prepared for you. According to Jeremiah 3.15, I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and they will feed you huh, with wisdom, with understanding, knowledge. You want to access light, number one, the consistent study of scripture. Number two, the house of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go, not let me go. The business of the house of God is a business of us. It says, when I came into the house of the Lord, then understood I their end. There is understanding when you come to the house of God. Are we learning? Number three, the third way we access light is through the power of mentorship. My God, do not forget this. The power of mentorship. Light being knowledge, light being revelation, light being illumination. Strategic distilled knowledge.
comes easily through the power of mentorship. Mentorship is a great gift, especially to the mentee, because you are having the opportunity to draw every knowledge from the one who is teaching you, minus the pain factor. He takes away the pain. In one day, you can receive the wisdom of a man's labor of 10 years, minus the pain. Let me tell you the truth. I preached a message last year, I think it was, Lessons from an Overcomer. It's a message worth listening to. And there I teach about the lessons that overcomers have to teach a generation. Lesson number one was that ignorance is not a demon. You don't solve it by casting it out. Among the many lessons captured in that teaching is that it is not what affects you what happens to you that affects you is the meaning that you give it. I gave an example in that teaching that what is the difference between falling under the anointing and falling in a restaurant? You fell. Why do you rejoice over one and get embarrassed over the other? The meaning you have connected to it. If you fall under the anointing now, you will get up no matter how dirty you look, you say, praise God. God has finally answered me. Someone will even be praying, why was I not the one who fell? Yet you fall in a restaurant and you feel like dying there. You fell. Maybe the worst fall was even in church, yet you were happy. Meaning is powerful. You have a responsibility of redefining the meanings that you give things. Hallelujah. Mentorship is powerful. Moses carried his pain for many years, invested it in the young boy Joshua. Jesus used three and a half years. Look at the ratio of transformation to empowerment. Three and a half years to one night. This is how Jesus raises people. You are a leader here. Let me challenge you. Don't be too quick to lay hands on people. Lay hands on capacity. It will work better. Because every oil assumes the shape of the vessel and the size of the vessel. Most times it's not an oil problem. Are we together now? If the vessel is small, it will make the oil look small. The prophet gave the solution. He said, go and borrow vessels. You can't borrow oil, but borrow vessels. Borrow vessels. Borrow vessels. Borrow vessels through the books that people have written. Borrow vessels through the sermons that have come. Borrow vessels through strategic programs that are put together. Mentorship is very, very powerful. It gives you the privilege of distilling knowledge of years without the pain factor. Are we together? Number four. The fourth way we access light in the kingdom, light that translates to our dominion, is through service. This is powerful. Service. Now, very few believers really understand the power of service. Service is beyond being a choir member or an usher. The first thing about service is that you have become the partaker of the grace. Whatever grace brought that platform wherein you are serving, you are a partaker of that grace. In 2 Kings, I believe, chapter 3 and verse 11, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, he was called the man who poured water on the hands of Elijah. The man who poured water on the hands of Elijah. The man who poured water on the hands of Elijah. Let me tell you what service does. Number one, service brings proximity. It brings you closer to be able to observe the working dynamics. What is really behind results? When you serve, it gives you access to proximity. Are we together? Imagine that you have the opportunity to serve in the house of a man of God who loves the Lord. Most likely you will study his prayer life even by serving there. You are cleaning and hearing how he's praying. You are seeing the sack. If he's sowing a seed to somebody, you may be a witness there. You have an opportunity to learn by observation. Service is very powerful. There are many people today in church who will not be able to access professional programs. They do not even have the money. But because they are members serving in church, the church can bring initiatives at no cost and they get to learn superior knowledge free of charge, the power of service. Do we have witnesses in this church? 
every visionary church I know has been involved in one kind of strategic training or empowerment forum in one way or the other that has brought people access to knowledge. Knowledge they otherwise may not easily be able to pay for. Service is powerful. It gives you access to the heart of kings. It gives you access to great people. You are able to learn. You go to the back end of results and really see how the results have been produced. That is the reason why if you are close to greatness and you fail, you wasted your time there. Those who serve don't just walk, they observe. You are the one who is working. You are work as a secretary or a clerk for a great man. Don't just transfer files from department to department. Observe the culture of excellence. Observe the fact that that man is the first to come to work and the last to go back. Observe the discipline and the diligence. You serve him food. Four hours the food is still there because he's busy. Those are the traits you pick together. So don't just listen to your pastor's sermon. Watch his disciplines. Take advantage of all you can learn. For those of you who have the privilege of informal access, don't abuse it. Learn it. What is the covenant this man has with God? Why does he have access to systems and structures easily? What is the key? Behind everything that works, there are secrets. Service affords you the proximity to learn. If you are here in this church and you've not found a place to serve, let me propose to you while I encourage you, find a place to serve. Service gives you an opportunity to learn. You see, the church is the only school where you don't write exams to be admitted. Your only basis for admission is desire. If you write jam, well, you are, you are all brilliant people in Jesus' name, but the truth is some will fail, some will pass. There are quota systems. Are we together? But the church gives allowance for everyone. If this is a faculty of medicine, you don't expect to see engineers here. You don't expect to see agriculturists here. But the church is a collection of people with vast knowledge across several fields, willing to share it freely. It is a reason why the church should not be a place of ignorance. I can only imagine the masters of several fields that are seated here listening to me. I believe there are consultants here, there are doctors here, there are professionals here, and most of them belong to various departments. And there are all kinds of fora that allow for the sharing of ideas. I'm telling you, most believers, if they are planted in the house of God and they are serious, the price of greatness should have been greatly subsidized for them. I do not believe believers should fail. They are before many opportunities. The bank manager is a member of the church. The billionaire is a member of the church. The prayer man is a member of the church. Everything is available to learn. Can only respond to your hunger. I'm praying for you that you will receive in this church both vertically and horizontally. Amen. Are you hearing my prayer? That you will receive both vertically and horizontally in the name of Jesus. That whilst you receive from pastor, you obtain grace to also receive from the people around you. Yeah. I learned from everything and I learned from everyone. From the time I came in, I sat down while pastor was preaching. You check my notes. I have learned so many things seated here. Hallelujah. One of the ways you know people who will be great for sure is their passion to learn. You learn from everything, even the ant. He says, go to the ant, you sluggard. A wise man will say, I'm not a sluggard, but I will still learn. Hallelujah. Mentorship, service. Let me give you the fifth one. The fifth way we access light according to scripture is through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Pastor Dwology spoke a bit about that when he was speaking about the prayer of inquiry. Very profound. John chapter 16 from verse 12 to 13. Jesus was speaking to the disciples and he says, I have many things to tell you. He says, but ye cannot bear them now. Then he says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, that the spirit of truth is able to guide you. Everybody say, guide me. One more time, say, guide me. Let it be a prayer. Say, guide me. The Spirit of God is able to guide a man into all truth. 
the spirit of truth can guide you. The truth concerning ministry. The truth concerning finances. The truth concerning your health. The truth concerning your influence. The Bible says, Thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. And that you will find rest for your soul. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is able to reveal to us so that we will know the things that are freely given to us of God. It is freely given, but it must be revealed by the Spirit. There are many, many believers who do not know that the solutions to their problems are so close to them. They do not know how to engage the Holy Spirit and access His wisdom. Access His wisdom access his wisdom it says now to the king eternal the king immortal the only wise god are we together and we can draw from his wisdom by the spirit the light shineth in the darkness the light shineth in the darkness of finances the darkness of relationships there are many things listen that believers need to know to excel you know many times honestly when i look at believers in all fairness, sometimes um, compassion just wells out of my heart because you can see the gaps in spiritual knowledge. And some of these people are well-intentioned, but they are not trained. Some of these people do not have the privilege of being under the ministry of a teaching priest. And you can see the gaps in spiritual knowledge. You see them crying and saying, what is the way out? And you know the solution will be far from these people because knowledge is still far from them. When God wants to help you, he shortens the distance between you and a teaching priest. He shortens the distance between you and a man or a woman who can help you. The utopian Enoch was reading and it was like stories. And he said, how can I understand except some man teach me? Light. Light. The light that translates to finances. You are not the first to trust God for increase. The call of God is upon your life. But there is a way you do ministry that will fail. There is a way you do ministry that will excel. It's only a matter of time. Do you have the light component? There is a way you can scale your organization from where it is now. Stop giving excuses and saying it's because we're in Lagos, it's because of the economy. It's not true. Your realities and your possibilities are defined by the light that you have or otherwise. Are we together? The Bible says that God called the light day and the darkness he called night. Please listen carefully. We're about to pray. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. That means in the economy of God, day is not afternoon. Day is not morning. It can be 12 noon and yet you are still in the night. He called the light day. That means what God calls day is not the shining of the sun. It's the presence of light. And if light is present even by 8 p.m., you are still in the day. Are we together? And the Bible says he called the darkness night. That means you know whether you are in the day or in the night. Not by the chronological oscillation of time. Uh -uh. The presence or the absence of light is what defines whether you are in the day or the night. And the Bible tells us that there are things that follow day and there are things that follow night. Are we together now? Yes. Weeping endures for... There is a relationship between night, darkness, ignorance and weeping. That it endures for the night. But joy cometh with the morning. He called the light day. And the darkness called night. That means you can turn your night to day. Not by waiting for 6 a.m. in the morning. When you access light. Light indeed. The Bible says that was the true light. That lighted every man. There are false lights. But there is the true light. And light is for everyone. That lighted every man. My prayer for you 
is that you will not just enjoy this conference speaker after speaker and just nod your head in joy and return back home only to recycle seasons of darkness but that you will get angry within your spirit i'm hoping that all the sessions tonight would have planted in you a holy dissatisfaction that whatever it is that is responsible for my current state that i'm not able to move forward to make progress I, I, you get dissatisfied with it hallelujah the bible gives us the biblical recommendation for affliction is any man afflicted it says let him pray if you are afflicted and you pray something comes out of that prayer that cures the affliction if you do not pray and you want affliction to go it will not go because you are violating a law how about obtaining promises Mark chapter 11 and verse 24. What things soever ye desire, the Bible says, when ye pray, not if, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them. It says, we have not because we ask not. For everyone that asketh receiveth. Everyone. Everyone that asketh receiveth. Are we together? I made up my mind as a covenant with my destiny. That for as long as I live, I will make progress daily. Because the Bible tells me that my path is as a shining light. I will never have a better yesterday. I don't have any covenant with yesterday. I love yesterday, but not that much to remain there. I'm determined about my tomorrow. Someone needs to get angry. You see, no matter the prophetic word that comes, 2024 will become like 2023 X you change. Are we together now? The seasons honor your own transformation. If you do not transit, all the seasons will look alike. They will reflect the stagnancy of the one who the seasons have come to lift. There are people, both rainy season and dry season does not produce any effect on them. Because they do not do anything during rainy season, they don't do anything during dry season. Light has dominion power. Hallelujah. I have seen this in my life. I've seen this in the life of everyone who is doing great exploits in ministry and in the kingdom. I've seen ordinary people, naive, ignorant, bankrupt of knowledge. They made up their minds to contend for light. And some of them in as short as one year, they redefine their lives, their mysteries. It doesn't take time as it is. There, are, there is a law of process like Pastor Bolaji shared. But let me tell you the truth. There are many of us, it's not a process. It's just ignorance. The process starts when you engage with light. If you have not even engaged, the process has not started. Time is just going. The reading actually starts when you engage with understanding. It says, arise and shine for your light is come. Someone say, my light has come. Apostle, pray for me. That's my own. Thank you for everything you've said, but I'm owing. There is a way out. Did you hear something Pastor Bolaji said? Very profound. What gives credence to prayer? I did a teaching, I think it was during Wolfbeck, that what gives credence to prayer is not necessarily the voluminous expressions, and he got that very powerful. There are two things required for potent prayer. It must be effectual, it must be heartfelt. What makes it heartfelt is that your emotions is invested into it. There is an attitude. But what makes it effectual is the word compliancy of that prayer. The degree to which revelation is invested in that prayer is where it derives its power from. Just shouting and bringing a spirit-inspired lamentation. That can be a groaning in the spirit. That's a different thing. But where you are just yelling at God, hoping that by shouting he will hear you, that does not work that way. Are we together? Light. 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 Great organizations have been built by light. This church right now is not sitting on a plot of or plots and acres of land, it's sitting on light. Everything depends on light. Your tomorrow depends on light. The primary assignment of Satan is not to put sickness in your body, 
That is a later assignment. The primary assignment of Satan is to hinder you from accessing light. Because in the presence of darkness, he can have a field day. Even if demons don't exist, in the presence of darkness, you will still fail. I'm very unapologetic about my pursuit for light. When I find genuine light, light that transforms, what do I need to learn? What else do I need to know in ministry? What else do I need to know for my finances? Are we together now? I ask questions. Dr. Mudok said a question is the seed for an answer. If you don't ask a question, you don't deserve an answer. Man of God, there is a way to do ministry efficiently and with power. Stop struggling. Access light by humility and meekness. Are we together? There is a way your finances can scale. You may be gifted, but things are not working. One person seated close to you, one sermon, one book can hand to you ancient keys that can turn your finances around. How about your health? You are laying hands on yourself and nothing is working. Maybe there's something you need to engage else. You see, let me tell you this. Most believers think that it's just action that brings results. No. Action that is powered by understanding is what produces results. It is not just action. So if you carry 1,000 naira or 1 million naira and just drop it in the basket, you will be surprised that for someone that is a seed, another person just donated money. Another person just lost money. You lost money in an offering basket. Did you hear what I said? The difference between it being financial loss or a donation or a spiritual activity that translates to a harvest is not the basket, it's not the money, it's the understanding of the one who engages it. Someone can use his seed as a weapon and with that weapon he will redefine seasons because all seeds die. So when you connect seasons to seed and you bury them, as the seeds die, the seasons too die. You can change seasons. But there are many people who give but they don't understand it. Are we together? Did you hear what I just said? Most people don't know what is invested in sacrifice. It's not that you are trying to bribe God. It's a mystery. All seeds die. That's how resurrection happens. And so one of the ways you change seasons is that you tie the seasons to a seed. As you sow it, as that seed dies, the season follows it. Because God is able to give every seed another body. You sow what you reap, but there are times you can sow more than what you reap. You can sow pain and not reap more pain. You will reap joy. The season has changed. Because God can give every seed another body. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. My sincere prayer for you with all my heart is that you make a covenant with your destiny that the days of ignorance will have to come to an end in my life and then little gaps here and there in as far as your knowing god and understanding his ways are concerned you make up your mind that this becomes the end of such ignorance that you will walk in high level spiritual illumination high level spiritual illumination I remember buying the book, The Mandate, The Living Faith Manual, and buying a few other books because I wanted to learn church administration from people who God had helped to run ministries at a very effective way. You understand? Transformation is not a gift. Nobody is born transformed. You engage transformation. It's not a gift. It's a reward. A reward for pressing. A reward for insisting. Is it alright if we pray? Please rise up on your feet. Hold the hands of someone by your left and your right and let's pray. Hold the hands of someone by your left and your right. Just lend me a minute or two and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. I want to do two things right now. We're going to pray and then you give me a chance to make an altar call and we're done for tonight. I want you to think for one minute how ignorance has pegged your destiny, pegged your finances, pegged your ministry. That if God were to learn to be learned through the lens of your experience, many people would not want to serve such a God because your life would have misrepresented God 
in a way that is not good. The good thing about destiny is that there is always room to change. There is hope for a living. I want you to begin to pray for yourself and then your neighbor. Lord, let me rise by light. I contend for light. Go ahead and pray. I contend for light. Someone is praying. The light that distinguishes me in ministry. The light that helps me command dominion in every aspect of my life. Someone is praying. Light responsible for my finances. Light responsible for my spiritual work. Light responsible for consistency in prayer. Consistency in the word. Light responsible for being a man of stature and character and grace. Light that empowers me to walk in ever increasing dimension. Go ahead and pray. Take a minute and invest prayer to your life and that of your neighbor. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the light shineth in the darkness. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. For someone you came to church tonight, it's not an impartation for you yet. What you received tonight was the gift of hunger. Hunger. Hunger is proof of health. When people are sick, the first thing they lose is appetite. Medical practitioners use hunger or lack of it as verification systems that this person is really sick. When you lose appetite spiritually, when you lose appetite, as far as evolving is concerned, is proof that something is wrong with your mind, something is wrong with your spirit. And for someone you came to church tonight and all through the sessions, God has planted in you hunger. For some of you here, you are men and women of God that God is making and lifting. You came for God to shake away laziness. To tell you if you want to do ministry the way you are doing it, you won't go anywhere. Nobody will follow you. It takes discipline. It takes light. High level spiritual illumination. People follow you to the extent to which you command light. Light from heaven. There are no sentiments to this thing. Are we together? Mm. Light. Go and buy books. Buy tapes. Buy the truth. Sell it not. Camp around it. If I were you, I'd go back, listen to these sessions again. Pastor preached about delay. Powerful message. Don't assume you understood what he said. And don't be emotional about it. Get it and listen again. The, the Spirit of God will tell you something you did not hear while you were in church. You listen to it and you write. I'm making this sacrifice for my children. I'm making this sacrifice for my company. I'm making this sacrifice for my destiny. And light comes. And from that standpoint, you begin to shine. Are we together? Refuse to remain small. Refuse to remain grounded. Don't just be clapping for pastor as he rises. His desire, the desire of every man of God is to see that the people planted under his grace become replications of the grace that God put upon his life. That as God is lifting Aaron, he will lift his sons too. Are we together? I pray for you. In the name that is above all names. The spirit of wisdom. The grace that is able to rest upon a man. Granting him access to superior light. Let it rest on you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that grace and peace be multiplied through knowledge. Grace and peace be multiplied through knowledge. That from this conference you are stepping into a new prophetic season. A season of signs and wonders. A season of speed. A season of restoration. A season of abundance. A season of increase. Greater fire. Greater wisdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. Ah, I sense an anointing just moving 
We're not doing an impartation tonight. The time is gone, but I'm just responding to something. I just sense that there is an anointing resting on people from this word. Just releasing people and shifting them into these prophetic seasons. What you heard tonight is beyond the lecture. It came with grace. The grace that brings you into that experience. And before I make the altar call, I release you to that grace. Access that grace. Access that. Help that lady, please. Access that grace. In the name of Jesus, I come by the apostolic and the prophetic. I shift you to a new season. I shift you to a new season. A new season financially. A new season spiritually. Since the waters has been stirred, I say it again. Shift to a new season. Shift to a new aparuskiata. In ministry, shift to a new season. Higher capacity in the spirit. The eyes that see and the ears that hear. Receive grace. Access power from heaven. Run like Elijah. You experience speed in your destiny. Experience restoration. For in Jesus' name we pray. We have to stop here. We've stretched our time. You need Jesus. The Bible calls him the way. Calls him the truth. Calls him life. Every time we're gathered like this on site and across all the expressions, there has to be someone who is in desperate need. A need to restore your relationship or a need to make a first time decision. God will always add daily as many as should be saved. And you are in this place whilst you heard me speak. The spirit of God began to convict you. Because the Bible says he will reprove the world of sin of righteousness and judgment. You are in this place. I want to give you the honor of making this great decision. It's the noblest decision any man can make in this side of God's kingdom. And I'm standing under the corporate anointing of the angel over this house. And all the men of God here represented. I'm going to count one to five. Very quickly, unashamedly, I want you to leave your seat and come and stand and don't wait for anyone to be the first this is a business between you and jesus as i count one to five leave your seat and run come and stand here one let's honor them as they come please stand for space don't kneel so that there can be space for others keep clapping as they come elevation church you can do better than this let's encourage them come win that war finally as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away, the Bible says. Keep clapping till they come. Young and old, come. Male and female, come. Enlightened and otherwise, come. Same thing is happening across all the experience centers. You can just step forward wherever you are. You're following online. You can indicate. I believe that there are people who are ready to attend to you hallelujah do we have anyone who is still coming please come quickly god bless you god bless you thank you thank you for coming hallelujah now ladies and gentlemen on behalf of jesus and the angel over this house i want to appreciate you for the courage to come stand before the lord this is the wisest decision that any man can make in this side of God's kingdom. The decision to be reconnected, to receive the life of Jesus, that becomes the starting point of your walking in victory. Are we together? And I want to appreciate you for those who are making a first time decision and those who are rededicating, um, making rededications. The Lord bless you. Let me request that you lift your right hand, if you will, high above your head as a sign of surrender. Please say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. Right now, I receive your life into my spirit. I declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life i am a child of god from today i go forward ever and backward never 
Amen. Keep your beautiful hands lifted as I pray for you. Father, thank you for these ones. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, you will in no wise cast away. They have come. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I impart upon you the grace that empowers you to live victorious Christian lives. You go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, please. I want you to look to the back. You will find a group of counselors waving the placard. Please do cooperate with them in one minute. They will have a word and a prayer with you. And then you are back to your seat. May God bless you. Thank you so very much. We'll see you tomorrow.